Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Innovation. Today we are going to look at how to use Google Spreadsheets to analyze some data. So first, we want to go to Google Sheets. To do that, you could type in Google Sheets in the address browser. And you can see it comes up right away. And we get this scene, which allows us to choose personal or business. We want to go to Google Sheets personal. And we want to create a blank sheet. Now that we have our blank sheet, what we're going to look at doing today is analyzing some data. So we're going to start by putting in some numbers and I'm just going to make up some numbers. 25, 5, 2, 2.5, 3.5, 1.25. And this could represent anything. Maybe it represents rainfall, or maybe it represents snow in different areas. Oh, that's a good one. Let's say it represents a snowstorm that happened. And we're looking at all these different areas that got different amounts of snow. And we're trying to look to see what kind of snowfall happened in the region. So here we go. Somebody got 10 inches, that's a lot. And there we go. Let's have all the towns in here where the snow happened. So we have Ivyland and New Hope and Chalfont and Warrington. Warwick, Warminster, Hatboro, Doylestown, Richboro, Lahaska, Upper Black Eddy, Kittnersville, Easton, Newtown, and Regalsville. So this is a snowstorm that we're going to pretend happened. And we want to kind of see what areas, what region got the most amount of snow, what region got the least amount of snow. So we want to start analyzing some of this data. So Google has built in this really nifty quick analysis tool that we're going to start with. We're going to highlight all of the numbers. And we do that if you look down here on the lower right hand side, I'm going to make this bigger so you can see it. We can see that it tells us the sum. It tells us the average. It tells us the lowest number, the highest number, and how many there are. So that's some great data for us to start with. Right now in math class, we're looking at doing line plots. So how could we get Google Spreadsheet to help us with some line plots? We're going to use the chart function. And what we're going to do is we're going to highlight the data again, just using our mouse. And way up here on the upper right hand side, there is this bar graph looking button. And when I hover over it, it says insert chart. So I'm going to press that button. And what it does is it gives me a chart. And it gives me this toolbar over here on the right hand side. Now what I would like to do is customize this because this is not quite a line graph like we've been doing in class. So first, I don't want a column chart. What I want is what's called a histogram. So I'm gonna search for a histogram in my list here. And it's way down here at the bottom. There it is under other called histograms. So I'm going to click that button. So now I have a histogram. The next thing I want to do is customize it because I want to be able to pick my scale. Right now, the computer picked a scale for me, but it's not the scale that I want. So we learned in math class in order to pick a scale, we have to look at the numbers to see which numbers are the smallest incremental changes. So if we look at our numbers, we have 
we have 2.5, we have some whole numbers. It looks like a scale of 0.25 might be the best choice for our line chart. So I'm going to go on here and click Customize. And I want to go in and customize the histogram and change what's called the bucket size. So I'm going to type in 0.25. And I'd also like to show the item dividers. So that draws in some lines for me. Oops, let me try that again. 0.25, press enter. And look, now I can see my chart as a line graph. So I can see that there are three for 1.25, and I can see that there's one for two, one for 2.25, one for 2.5. We can see that there's one for 3.5, one for 4.25. We can see that two of them got five point, um, two five inches or five inches, two of them got five inches, that was New Hope. And then we can see that one got 5.25 and we got one that got 6.25, one that got 10 and one that got 10 and a half. So we now have our histogram line chart and we can see all of the information and that did it for us pretty quick. Now, the other thing we might wanna do is go back to our data and see if we can sort this by value. So from smallest to largest, which might give us an idea if we looked on a map to see who got the most amount of snow and who got the least amount of snow. And there might be some outliers in there. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna highlight again, but this time I wanna highlight both the names and the values. It's very important that you get both. Then I'm gonna go to data and I wanna sort by column A, which is the first option here. Now I could also choose a different way of sorting, but column A is what I wanna sort by. I wanna sort by the values. And I can either go A to Z, which would mean lowest to highest, or Z to A, which would be highest to lowest. So for us, I'm gonna to choose to sort a to Z. And look, when I do that, all of the numbers are now sorted in this column from lowest to highest. And I could see who got the most amount of snow and who got the least amount of snow. I also have my histogram here where I can see all of the data plotted on my graph and see Again, who, how many people, what was the most frequent amount of snow? So it looks like 1.25 was the most frequent amount of snow. So the mode of our data would be 1.25. And if we wanna go back and get the average again, we can do that just by highlighting our data and looking down here. And again, we can see the sum is 62.25 and we can see the average amount of snow for the whole area was 4.25. 8183. But we might want to break our averages up. Maybe we want to just look in the this area, which is kind of like the um, middle central Bucks County area. And we can see that our average for there was two inches. And maybe we want to look in our area, the New Hope, Doylestown area. And we can see the average for that was 4.875 inches and maybe we want to look more north towards the river and we can see that their average was 8.9 inches so we can do some really quick averages and great data analysis using google sheets so what else can we do with google sheets well we can also get this information and let it show up on the spreadsheet rather than just using the quick tool we could calculate the sum by pressing an equal sign and then typing the word sum, S-U-M, and notice we get all of these 
functions that show up. And I'm going to put a parenthesis. And then I'm going to highlight all the cells that I want to add up. I'm going to close my parentheses and press enter. And now I have the average of all of my cells. Now it's giving this suggestion here to autofill all this information in. So we're going to add up everything as we go, but we don't want to do that. So I'm just going to click no. But I do want to say what it is. This is the sum. Now I want to calculate the average. There's a couple different ways of doing that. I could take the sum and divide by how many there are here. I can see that there are 15 just by looking at the numbers on the left hand side. So if I want to do a quick average, I would take an equal sign again, because we're doing a function. And I want to get the sum, which we already calculated. So all I have to do to get the sum is click on this cell right here, which is C1. And I want to divide it by 15, because there are 15 items. And I press Enter. And there's my average. Now I can also get the minimum and maximum, the lowest value and highest value. I can see that in the data because it's sorted, but let's say it wasn't sorted and I wanted to get the lowest value and the highest value. Again, I would press equals and type in another function. I want the minimum and the max. So look, I type in M and MIN comes up and I'm going to highlight my data and it's going to tell me the smallest. And I want to tell everybody that this is the minimum. And then I'm going to do it again, but this time it's going to be the maximum. And highlight my data. Close the parentheses and press enter. And I can see that this is my maximum. So now I have my sum. I have my average. I have my minimum. I have my maximum. I have my graph. Now I might want to also go in my graph and change it a little bit. So I see the three dots here and I can click edit chart. And now I can go in and maybe do some special stuff like go in and put in a chart title. So we want to change the title. And I want to say snowstorm. Snowstorm totals. And I can choose a different theme if I want and get the text to be all kind of cool say I like a purple good I can also put in a legend and modify that that is um, a description as to what all these numbers mean I can label the horizontal and axis put in a minimum value and maximum value I can slant the values like that so maybe they fit better it makes it easier to see But then we kind of lose some of our scale, so I don't like that. Go back to zero. There you go. The vertical axis, I have some options. And then I could put in grid lines. Now this is useful to see where things are on our graph. You see, we can affect the grid lines, and I can put in some grid lines so I can make it easier to see and count. And I can change the colors of those and see all the interesting information. So now I have my graph for my snowstorm totals. I have all of my data. I have all of my labels. I have my sum average minimum maximum. I can get some partial sums by highlighting my region and look down here. And again, I can see my average, min, and max, and I can see the count, so I can see how many I highlighted. But you can always look at the numbers over here to see the count as well. We might want to title our spreadsheet. No storm. 2021. And we might want to go ahead and share our sheet. So if we want to share our data with our teacher, we would click on this share button and it gives us a couple options. 
we could share it by typing in people's names. So if you know the name of your teacher, you could type in the name of your teacher. So I'm going to do, oh, look, there's Mrs. White. So we'll type her in and we'll say, my snowstorm data. And I could click send. There we go. I could also click share and I could get a link. So I click down here and copy the link. And then I can email that to anybody who is in, who has a New Hope Solbury Lions email. But if I wanted to send it to somebody who doesn't have a New Hope Solbury Lions email, I could send it to anyone with the link. And now anyone I send this link to will work. Sometimes that's useful because your NHSD Lions is different than our NHSD and we might need to send it to anyone with a link. So that's sometimes useful. You can also give people the option to become an, a viewer or a commenter or an editor. So if you're sending it to your teacher, you might want to let them be a commenter so they can send you comments about your project. So now we have our complete set of data and our information is shared with our teacher. That's all for now. Why don't you give it a try? Find some data. So you might want to go and look on the internet and find some data. So maybe like snow totals. We could just search that. And we can see with a quick search, we can find some data. So this was from hmm, today. Not much. Oh, actually, somebody got some snow. But we could do a different day. see oh we could change we can't do a different day maybe we could do temperature temperature is a good one or pressure there's a whole bunch of numbers for pressure so we could get a data just from the internet and graph that data so you might want to graph the data from the internet into Google Sheets now if you don't want to type it all you can just highlight it we highlight this whole table And copy it and then go into Google Sheets and we could start a new one and I could just click on this first cell and control V or edit paste and it pastes in all of the data for me and now I have the towns and I could graph the time or I could graph the temperature the feels like the dew point the humidity um, the pressure, any one of these data, and I can get rid of the ones I don't want by deleting the columns. So I just right clicked and click delete. And we probably don't need the time, right click and click delete. So now we got some good data that we could graph and we could go through and find out what's the average temperature today. Highlight all these things. And there we go. We can see that there's 32. And it's not giving me the sum, probably because there's this F in here. So we might have to format that and get rid of the F. Um, but we could do that. Or maybe we could do the pressure. The pressure is better. Do all those. And we can see we can get a sum and we can get an average. The average pressure is 30. So that's great. So that just gives you a very quick way of analyzing data and formatting data in sheets. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.